Hi, so in this video, we're going to take a look at Microsoft Teams collaborative meeting notes using Loop. So this is a new feature for Microsoft using Microsoft Loop in Microsoft Teams meetings to hopefully make your notes taking lives a little easier. But we'll go and have a look and see if that is true or not. I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director at MeTime, where we help make your employees' lives easier by getting more out of Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365. If you're interested in working together, then stick around until the end to find out more. Cool, so here we are in Teams, and if you've seen any of our previous videos, it seems like Microsoft hate channel meetings, so you can't do collaborative meeting notes in a channel meeting at the time of recording. I'm hoping Microsoft sort it out. They haven't got a loop in channels at the moment and so because the collaborative meeting notes feature the new feature is using microsoft loop then it just doesn't work in a channel so i can see why they wouldn't do that also as we've seen in previous videos it also doesn't work in meet now because who needs to take notes when you're having a quick meeting obviously obviously that's not going to work uh, i don't know why microsoft make it so hard to to understand a new feature but Let's get into how it does work. So you need to create a new scheduled meeting. It can't be a scheduled meeting in a channel. It's got to be a scheduled meeting that's going to show up in chat, which if you've seen any of my other videos, I don't like because you're going to end up losing whatever you've made notes about. At least we can go and put it somewhere else in loop, which we're going to have a look at. So we'll create a new meeting and it pops up. We'll give it a title. Obviously you can put all the same stuff in we used to put in. And then the new bit is at the bottom. So we've got new videos on Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Viva and Microsoft Copilot coming out every Tuesday. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new one comes out. It doesn't say notes at this point. It just says add an agenda that others can edit. So let's start getting in the, to the collaborative nature of this feature. So we'll click it and it creates a loop component for us with a bit of a template. So it's got the agenda, which is a tick box. It's got some meeting notes, which are bullet points and some follow-up tasks, which will actually go back and sync into Planner. So if you haven't seen my video just on Microsoft Loop and using Microsoft Loop for work, then go and check out that video next because we go through a bit more about how Loop in general is working and the current state of Microsoft Loop and how it's uh, integrated into Planner. So obviously when we're creating the meeting, we can do this. If we didn't do it up front, once we're in the meeting, we can still use the collaborative meeting notes feature as long as it is a scheduled meeting, not a meet now and not a meeting in a channel. We can just put in our agenda. If I was doing a proper agenda and running a formal meeting, I would usually put it the time each agenda item is starting. So at least you know if you're on track. So because this one's starting at half 10, I'll do 10.30, we're going to do intro, 10.35, we're going to do, I don't know, options, 10.45, we'll do recommendations, 10.50, we'll do discussion, and 10.55, we'll do decision. How many of your meetings have a decision at the end? I'm not sure, but good to have a purpose for that meeting. There's no way to put in the context for the meeting, but obviously it is just a live loop component. So we can put in whatever we would put into a Microsoft loop. So if we put type slash, we can put in anything else that we want to put in there. I don't think voting table was in last time I looked at loop, but we could put that in if we wanted to, because it is, it's a live loop component. Looks like a, a loop page that's living in our meeting. So we can put in whatever we want. Obviously we've got these, three things and we'll just do it as is right now. We can hide meeting notes on the invite, which is interesting. So obviously we wouldn't want to do that if we have to put the agenda in. And when this goes out, so if I add in my personal address, I'm not sure loop goes external. So we'll have a test of that. And so they might not be able to see the agenda. So something to bear in mind that Microsoft are not great at saying how the feature works. Like, is it going to work when I send it externally? You just end up finding out that people in your meeting haven't got the agenda because you've put it in the loop rather than putting it in there. If you were that bothered, obviously you could just copy and paste this into the details of the meeting and obviously they would then see that because that's the normal way of doing a meeting, if that makes sense. We will go and send that. And then whoever's got access to that meeting, as it says, it's collaborative meeting notes, you can't see it when you just have the pop-up, but if you expand it, anyone can go and see this loop page and go and change it. So 
I guess with great power comes great responsibility. Anyone could go and change anything in your agenda. So I don't know, they could go and troll you before or after the meeting because I want a decision was rubbish and go and change it. It is work. So hopefully you wouldn't go and do that at work anyway. And you can go back and see who's changed what in loop because it's got some version control on it. But let's just jump into, yeah. So in my Hotmail, obviously it's external, obviously it's a personal account and not a work one. I don't see that loop component come through in the meeting invite at all. So there's just, there's, there's no way of seeing that meeting agenda until I join the meeting and see it. So that's one thing to bear in mind. If we go and join the meeting now, we've got Speaker Coach on from the other video. So if you've not checked out Speaker Coach, then go and check out this video here. And you can see because we've done those notes, the meeting notes has already popped up on the right hand side already. Obviously we can hide and show what was in the sidebar. If we hadn't done the agenda, when we did the meeting invite, we could still go and click notes button and it would create a loop notes for us. So what well, Wiki used to power meeting notes. And so because Microsoft are getting rid of Wiki in Teams channels and replacing it with OneNote and now replacing meeting notes with loop, we've got sort of a gap. So if you want to do meeting notes in a meet now, you can't do it because you can't put loop in a meet now and OneNote doesn't work in a meet now either if you've got a channel meeting and you do want to do meeting notes then you can't there's no functionality to do meeting notes in a channel because you can't put a loop in a channel and so we'll have a look at where these go now once we've done them so the benefit is multiple people can go and edit this live so it's popping up where my cursor is this is my the other instance of me that's presumably it thinks I'm still editing in the invite. And so multiple people can take meeting notes at the same time, which is great. So, you know, as the meeting's going, you can be type, you know, multiple people can be typing in the meeting notes here and everybody can see it live, which I mean, that functionality is, is great. If we do a task, I'm assigning it to me. I can put a due date on and we can put the task name in. So follow up on the decision that wasn't made. It's probably a good action for what comes out of most organizations meetings. Very unfrequently, we're actually getting stuff decided in meetings, I would say. If you want more help running more effective meetings, then maybe stick around to the end to see if we're a good fit to work together. So we've made that task. Anyone could make that task and assign it to anyone else in the meeting. But when I click assign to, it's giving me suggestions even of people that aren't in the meeting, which is probably not that helpful. So I'm not sure if there were more people in the meeting, it would show them first, because that would be useful. So anyone can come and collaborate on the meeting notes, the follow-up tasks, everything. And this loop is then living in the meeting. So when we leave that meeting, like everything that's not in a channel, this is going to live in chat. So the meeting lives in chat, it's going to get lost at some point, I would say, because chat just keeps going until it goes off the top of the screen. I would assume that most people are not going back into chat to find that meeting. But I guess as they put more and more things into the meeting tabs, then I guess people are more likely to go back and have a look. And you can see it as we just come straight back out, it's just got chat files details and those notes have updated here down the bottom with the stuff that we've just added and it would have updated live so wherever this loop page or loop component is shown then it's going to update live i would like to see a notes tab at the top it's just a bit clunky it's like where do i go back to it so like normal people doing a normal job are going to have this problem so like, well, where where is it where does it go how do i get back to it if it's not easy then people are just going to use something else. So even though the feature is amazing, the technology is great, that it's updating everywhere, multiple people can update it live. If we're not doing enough to like just make it easy to get back to it, there's no point recording that information. So this task will have gone through to Planner. And again, if you've not seen my video, I'm using Microsoft Loop for work, check that out. And that's going to go through to Planner. So assigning people tasks in that way is really useful. If we had like quite a lot of notes about what was going on in the meeting, then that's not that great because it's not going to go anywhere else apart from in this loop component or this loop page because I guess components can be multiple components or individual components quite confusingly 
which is why you need to watch the, that other video. So at the time of recording, if I copy that loop page and go and stick it into OneNote, which I'll just bring up on the screen here, and paste it in on the Mac version of OneNote, it just pastes a link. No one's going to bother clicking that link. So if we take our notes in OneNote and we want our meeting notes to appear in OneNote, then that's not going to work, at least right now on the Mac. They are updating OneNote, so it has loop components in it, which is confusing that then when you would use OneNote and when you would use Loop. Obviously, if you're using Loop workspaces, like the whole version of Loop, then it's going to show up in Loop. But at the moment, that's in preview and only on the web. And if we jump into Teams and say, well, we've been using the new OneNote in our team, and we're like, well, we want to keep all of our notes together, we'll call this the meeting, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to paste that loop component in there. Then again, it just pastes a text link. So the loop doesn't work in OneNote on the web, OneNote in Teams, which is OneNote on the web, or OneNote on the Mac at the moment. Pretty sure it doesn't work on OneNote in Windows either. So you can't do anything with those meeting notes to keep them in notes unless you're using the preview of loop at the time of recording. So the only place that those meeting notes are going to live is in chat in the meeting. Obviously, if you're creating lots of notes as part of your you know, daily working in a channel, which Microsoft are getting you to do in OneNote, it's then odd that then you know, part of you collaborating together is having meetings and then but your meeting notes are then at the time of recording living somewhere else and you can't join them together. So it's a little bit disjointed at the time of recording, especially because OneNote already supports co-authoring. So some of the things that we've got where multiple people can type in stuff into the meeting notes at the same time, well, we can already do that one note. So we don't need loop to be able to do that. Some of the things where you're assigning someone a task and it goes into planner is only available in loop. But it seems like maybe we could have just done that in OneNote, made the fe feature work in OneNote rather than creating a whole another thing for loop. It's a little bit disjointed. Not sure how I feel about it completely just yet. It feels like Microsoft just needs to get loop working obviously all the big news about microsoft at the moment is copilot coming out and if you've not seen my video on copilot then check out this video here next but it seems like all the investment and development time is going into copilot which is great and it's going to be transformational but then some of these other things that also could be amazing and a massive time saver are sort of languishing and not actually done the hard thinking potentially to get them to work together. So a normal person could do a normal job. It's like, cool, we're going to use the team's channels to run our entire project, unless we want to do meeting notes. And then actually we need to flip out into a scheduled meeting that's going to come into chat. We can't use a channel meeting. So then we're not storing stuff in the team. So then the team isn't the place of keeping up to speed with what's the project's going on, because then we need to jump into chat to go and find out what the meeting notes are. Similarly, if we had got recording and transcription turned on and we've got teams premium then we would get a microsoft teams intelligent recap summary of the meeting for us so if you haven't seen that video on microsoft teams intelligent recap then check out the video here apologies for recommending so many other videos but this is the problem that microsoft i think should be solving for is there's now so many different ways of doing something very similar that it is completely confusing to a normal person doing a normal job. Like, where, where is that going? What should I be using? So if we've got Microsoft Teams Intelligent Recap turned on, so we're recording the meeting and transcribing it, it's going to do a summary of the meeting for us. So we don't need to take the meeting notes necessarily. I would advise taking meeting notes separately anyway, because one, it's a bit fiddly. It doesn't always get it right. It is AI. Two, it has lost entire meeting notes in a live meeting that is really important that I need and seemingly there's no way to get to regenerate those even though the meeting recording is still there the transcription is still there there's no button to press they will just just going to generate the 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 meeting recap for me please it's like no it's just I haven't done it so I'm not going to carry on I'm not, I just there's no way to do it which I have fed back to Microsoft and if you think that's important then maybe feedback to them as well but there's no integration at the time of recording, and I've not heard anything that this is going to come between Microsoft Teams Intelligent Recap creating automatic notes and it creates suggested tasks for you that that doesn't integrate into the meeting notes feature in Teams. So you can't get those meeting notes from the Intelligent Recap 
and that they're not going to automatically populate into the notes loop component that's associated with the meeting. Similarly, the suggested tasks don't go into planner, they don't go into this loop either. So if you want those to happen, then we've pretty much got to get the team's meeting re intelligent recap and go and copy and paste it into this loop. And again, if we're, unless we're using loop workspaces, which isn't in general release yet at the time of recording, it's in preview. And someone commented on my video on Microsoft Loop and said that they'd try to move everything over to it and it's just completely lost all of their work which I guess mistakes happen. It is in preview. We shouldn't be using it in, in anger yet, but it's like, well, they're, they're dripping in functionality that then is, isn't a cohesive thing to use. So again, this isn't preview. This is general release or should be. So we had got the intelligent recap done here. There will be another tab that said recap. You have to jump into that, copy the things, come back into here, paste it in. And then even if we did that, this loop component only lives in the meeting chat we can't paste it into one note at the time of recording and loop is in preview so let me know what you think would you think it would be beneficial for microsoft to actually think about getting a cohesive way about how people do their work let me know in the comments below and what do you think of microsoft loop feature the collaborative meeting notes let me know that in the comments below as well. Do you think it's something you're going to use? Something you're going to leave for a little bit to see what happens? Let me know. Love to hear your thoughts on it. So if your organization needs help cutting through all of the seemingly disparate ways that Microsoft 365 works together to actually save your employees time, make their lives easier so they can increase sales for you and you can increase well-being for them, that's what I'm interested in helping organizations do. So if that sounds like a good fit for your organization, then book a call using the link in the description below and we can get your next best step towards modern working together. If you just like these videos and you want to keep seeing them coming out, then consider supporting the channel using one of the links in the description below. You can buy us a beer, use super thanks, switch your energy supplier or buy a Tesla if you're already thinking of doing one and that really helps support the channel and keep these videos coming out for free. It would really help us out in the algorithm if you hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already. Thank you for watching so far and I'll see you in the next one.